many times we talk about God and what He was like. God our Father and our... Now I'm up here, I forgot to bring up the Scripture that basically Jesus says, when you've seen Me, you've seen the Father. This is a part that I'm going to be covering today is something that I don't know if we forget. That Jesus loved us more than we can imagine. And He did not exalt power over us. He was not demanding. Uh, he did not punish. The one instance I can think of where he really got kind of cranky is when he put a whip together and drove money changers out of the temple. Jesus did not go around punishing people. Now we're going to see a different side of Jesus than sometimes we consider. We're going to start in uh, John 13. And kind of keep that marked because we're going to be in John 13 for a bit. Now that before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. This scripture, we're kind of, kind of picture we read just before we did the Lord's Supper. Because verse 2 takes us, And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. A couple of things I want to point out in verse 1. Jesus knew, he knew it was time. He knew what was coming. In verse 2, Jesus also knew when the devil put into Simon's heart to betray him. Many times we kind of forget this. The Judas, well, Ju yeah, the devil put in Judas's heart to betray him. Many times we forget that Judas was with Jesus the whole, you know, pretty much the whole time of his ministry. Judas listened. He sat under Jesus. He heard what Jesus had to say. He seen the miracles. Verse 3, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into His hands and that He was come from God and went to God. Jesus, before He was betrayed, knew who He was 100%. There was no doubt Jesus knew who He was. And he knew that all things were given to him. Jesus could have at any time opted out. He could have at any time called 10,000 angels and they would have wiped the whole city out and Jesus could have kept on going. But he knew what was ahead of him. He knew what he had to face. When he once knew that he was from God and who he is, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherein he was girded. Jesus, God incarnate, washed his disciples' feet. This was a job that was normally considered for slaves, or for the whoever is the lowest rung in the household. Jesus did not exalt himself over others. He did not fight to become number one. He wasn't bad mouthing his disciples behind their back, you know, to somehow or another make himself better. Jesus had all power, yet he chose to esteem others above himself. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, 
thou hast no part with me. Jesus cleanses. He still does. If Jesus has not cleansed our lives, become part of us, He has no part with us. If you see, if I wash thee not, you have no part with me. We need to have Jesus in our life. I pray that Jesus has washed you and made you whole. And when Jesus has washed you, you are clean indeed. Uh, when we become a Christian, we're washed. We're completely clean, thoroughly complete. We are a part of Him. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. When we are clean, we are completely clean. And that's what that is saying. He's not. When Jesus washes us, we are completely clean. We're not talking about our physical body as we had our study with spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is 100% clean before Jesus and before God. We are completely clean, not just a little, but all. But something else I'll kind of like to bring forth. Let's go to Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in him, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. When the verse says, you know, we, are, we would have no part with Jesus, you know, if we're not washed by him, then he is not in our life. But being we are washed by Jesus, we are complete in Him. Part of us is Jesus. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through that spiritual part of us. Verse 11, For He knew who should betray Him, therefore He said, Ye are not all clean. Judas, he... Uh, his feet was washed as well. Many times we forget that Jesus washed the feet of the very person who he knew would betray him. Many times we depend on, hey, I was baptized, you know, surely I'm going to heaven. Or, man, I go to church every week. I've witnessed. I've cast out demons, I've healed in your name. But if we do not have Jesus in our heart, it doesn't matter. Judas, I don't know if you remember when he sent the disciples out two by two. Jesus, Judas was there. He was healing, casting out demons, proclaiming the gospel. I don't have any reason to believe that he didn't, because surely. After they come back, that have been one of the things mentioned is Judas said, huh, it never worked. But we have to remember that just because somebody appears to have the trappings of a Christian or, hey, that guy seems like he's a pretty good guy and he's up there preaching every week, he must be all right. People are people. If we do not have Jesus Christ the center of our life, it does not matter. What we try to do, it does not matter what kind of power we achieve. It does not matter if we gain the whole world. If we lose our soul, it's for naught. Jesus knew that Judas would betray him. He knew what would happen, yet he did not stop. We cannot depend on our church membership, we cannot depend on we grew up in a good family. We cannot depend on I go out and I help others and take care of orphans and feed, feed the, the, the poor and give away everything I have. If we do it without the love of Jesus in our heart, 
we would fall in the same category as Judas. We talk about being baptized. Judas was washed by Jesus himself. And yet, his heart was in the wrong place. Jesus did not force him to be saved. Jesus did not punish him. Judas punished himself. The devil kind of worked on him and messed him up. But how many times do we allow the devil to beat us up? But Jesus represented God on this world. And many times when we're complaining about God, we're saying that, hey, you know, what? look at all this stuff God allows to happen. God is not allowing to happen. We as people are in control. He turned it over to us. And I will say mankind's making a mess of things. But as Christians, it is our job to be the salt and the light of this world. We are to be out there doing. We are to be letting our light shine that Jesus has put in us. We are to be the witness. Where is your heart today? Does it belong to Jesus? Have you been baptized and you're doing all the right things, yet you still feel empty, lost inside? We need to give our heart to Jesus. Jesus deserves our heart. God deserves our heart. When we have a true understanding of how much God loves us, that He would lower Himself on this planet, Jesus give up all kinds of glory. He give up a kingdom. Man, I would think if I was looking at coming down here, I'd come to a more comfortable time, you know, with air conditioning and quality running water. Jesus come at a time that was pretty rough. He gave up a lot to come down here to pay the cost of our sins so that we could be loved, accepted, and righteous before God.